excellent leaders welcome to yet another exciting time that we're about to have in god's presence this is a wonderful day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it jesus loves you welcome to church but before we start today's service let's go to god in prayer our father in heaven lord we thank you for today Thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. Lord, indeed, we are grateful and we say may you alone be all, may all the glory and praise be unto you. Thank you, Father, for even as we fellowship in your presence, that you should dwell in our midst and give us a word to run with. Thank you for we are going to live here refreshed and renewed in the spirit. To you be all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. It's time for our nuggets. We're going to look at Know Your Way Around the Books of the Bible, Part 2. Did you go through the first three sets of the Bible? Do you know them now? If not, look through last week's quiet time and learn them. We're going to look at the books of prophecy to the Acts of the Apostle in our nuggets for today. Let's go. Number four books of prophecy they are the fourth set of books in the bible 
There are five major books of prophecy and 12 minor books of prophecy. The five major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, and Daniel. I take it again. The five major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And we will call them IJ led. Repeat after me. IJ led. Very good. The 12 minor prophets are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Abadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Hagar, Zechariah, and Malachi. Did you get it? Now we're going to sing a song. Oza, Joel, Amos, Obeda, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Abba, Kuk, Zephaniah, Zachariah, Malachi. Oza, Joel, Amos, Obeda, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Abba, Kuk, Zephaniah, Zachariah, Malachi. Number five, the Gospels to the Acts of the Apostle. The New Testament begins with the Gospels and they are four in number. They tell of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ while he was on earth and they are written by four of his disciples. They are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Again, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Awesome. Immediately after the gospel is a book of history called the Acts of the Apostles. These are in your quiet time for the week. Make sure you go through them and know them. And I'll see you again. Bye. What an amazing service we've been having. But it's time to look into the Word of God right now. And our topic for today is mixed multitudes. I know you may have heard that word multitude. It means a large crowd of people, if you don't know what it means. And so today we're talking about mixed multitudes. Now remember that we said Jesus told stories called parables. And one of the parables that Jesus told was about a farmer that went to his farm and planted some wheat. I mean, he didn't do it alone because he had a large farm. So he had some helpers who were working with him and they planted and they were so happy when they were done planting the wheat you know they left the farm and they were planning how to come back to check on the farm to see how the wheat was growing you know they were planning to monitor it maybe take some cool pictures to remember how the farm looked like as soon as they left the enemy of the farmer went to plant wild grass in the same farm where he planted his wheat can you imagine he just went in in the dark and planted those bad seeds and nobody knew. So can you imagine how the farmer would have felt on the day they came to check their farm and his, and his workers told him that wild grasses were growing in the field alongside with the wheat. They thought he was going to be angry and shout, but he didn't. He was calm. And the workers were confused because they know that the wild grasses was not useful for anything at all, except to be burnt by fire, of course. But the farmer had the plan. And that was why he was calm. He said, no, no, no. Don't go to pull out the wild grasses. You may pull out the wheat in place. He had a plan that was going to work at the end of the day. And he knew what he was going to do. You know, this story reminds me of another parable that Jesus told, and it's called the parable of the dragnet. Now, in this particular story, some fishermen went to the sea and then they cast their very large net into the sea and it gathered plenty of all kinds of fish. I can imagine they even caught some sharks. Ooh, who will eat it? Not me. Now, when it was full, they just collected the net. And when they would have seen those fishes they didn't like, they would have wanted to throw them out, right? But the head fisherman said, no, bring everything into the vessel. And then they took time to select the good fishes, like the croaker fish, the sardines that everybody loves eating. And then they threw away the bad ones, like the sea urchins, and maybe 
It's bull shark that nobody would want to eat because their skin is tough. And so that is how it is that when it was time for harvest, that's when they gathered the good seeds, the wheat, and then the wild grasses, they threw it out of the farm to be burnt all on the day of harvest. Now let's look at this story because it's in the Bible. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24 to 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to verse 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tars also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tars? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tars, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tars, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now from this passage, we can see that the sower is Jesus Christ. And the good seeds are the followers of Jesus. That's you and I. The field is the world where we live. And the enemy, of course, who planted the wild grasses, he's the devil. Now the wild grass themselves are the followers of the devil. That those who obey Satan, they have not decided to follow Jesus at all. And of course the harvest is when Jesus comes back to earth to take all of us. Now as children of God, we need to be on our watch. We need to be very, very careful to make sure that the devil does not come to pl plant wild grasses in our lives that Jesus has you know, put good seeds into. He comes with different people that we may see in church and when we think oh, they're in church, so maybe they're like us. But they don't love Jesus at all. They are friends of the devil and they're like the wild grass coming to take away all the good things we have in us. And now some of these wild grasses can come as lying friends, friends that want to teach us how to fight, friends that want to make us doubt what the Bible is saying. And once we believe them and start practicing it, all the good seeds in our life will die off. There are some truths that we learned in this lesson today. Number one, God's field is the entire world. Nigeria, Abuja, Port Harcourt, US, Europe, and everywhere. That's the field. And he has planted the good seeds that are the children of the kingdom. That is you and me. Number two, if you don't allow the devil to come with his wild grasses to choke you, we will be in God's kingdom forever. I'm sure you will. Don't allow those wild grasses come near. Number three, the devil, the enemy, is always looking for how to plant wild grasses in our lives. He's always looking for how to make us want to lie or how to fight or how to do things that God does not want us to do. So you have to be careful to make sure Anytime your younger brother or your sister does something and then it comes to your mind, hit his head, pinch him. That is not from God. Because if, if you are, if you are the fr a friend of Jesus and somebody hurts you, you're going to tell the person, oh, you hurt my arm, will you please say sorry? And the person will say sorry. And then you remain friends, okay? So don't allow him to plant those seeds. Number four, you need to learn to be patient with people and treat people with kindness, with friendliness and gentleness. Remember, that's what Jesus, the sower, did in the story. He allowed the wheat to grow up, the wild grasses that were just growing in the field. And he didn't do anything because he didn't want to hurt the wheat. And that is why God has not come to take away every bad person in the world. He's giving them also time to see if they will maybe make Jesus their friend. Because sometimes, if he takes away all the bad people in the world like that, he could hurt us. Because some of those bad people may be people teaching us. Yes, some of those bad people may be living in our house. They are bad, not because they don't want to do good things, but because they have not made Jesus their friend. And maybe just like the sower allowed the wild grass to grow. And while they are growing and they are seeing the kind of lives we are living, they may want to know Jesus. And then they will just become 
one of us in the kingdom. Wouldn't it be amazing when it happens? I guess it would be. Don't worry. We'll know what to do to make sure that these people will join us in the kingdom of God. Number five, until we grow up and get matured in God, we cannot bear fruit. Just like when you plant a corn today, you can't expect to harvest it tomorrow. This is the corn season. Most of the people who have harvested their corn and are selling it on the road, they plant that way, way back. So if you're planting today, you have to allow it to take time to ripen in future. And that's how it is with us and God. And if you don't bear fruit, we would not know whether you're a child of God or a child of the devil. That's the difference. Remember when the farmer said, allow everything to grow together, the wild grass and the wheat. Because wild grasses don't bear any fruit, but the wheat will bear fruits. So you need to bear fruits for the kingdom of God. Number six, just like the wheat is very important. That was why the farmer didn't want anybody to pull out any wild grass that will affect the wheat. You are very important and of value to God. Very, very important. Don't forget that at any time. Is that okay? Now let's take our memory verse. Our memory verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. I want you to say it together with me because it's flashing through your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. Can we say that again? I like it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. Now, in our home play this week, I want you to look out and write out what good seed can you sow in somebody's life? If you think the person is not yet in the kingdom of God, or maybe they are Jesus' friends, but what good seed can you sow to make them see your good work and want to love Jesus just the way you do? Write them down, write about five, and then just go ahead and sow just like the sower. Keep sowing good seeds, and I'll see you in the next service. Hello leaders, I believe you had an awesome service today. Moms, dads, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Telegrams community where you'll be able to download our quiet time for the week and follow up with our wonderfully lined up home plays we have for you. To be a part of our next Inter's chat room, send an SMS, a WhatsApp or a text via the numbers on the screen where you send your questions for our last pre two previously talked topics and any question you have at all we'll be able to answer them and then keep you enlightened don't forget you are a leader go and conquer your world for jesus bye